Hello and welcome to the 2021 Mercuro Class Living Museum. This year's Living Museum looks a little bit different than the ones we've done in the past and that's because this class this year has been entirely virtual, all working from home online. The performances you are about to see were not scripted or directed by me, but rather fully created and performed by the students individually at home on their own. They really worked hard and I could not be more proud of the work that they have done. This year's Living Museum theme is Ancient Civilizations. Week after week, we have gone back in time to explore these great civilizations of the past. From early man, to the Egyptian pharaohs, to the story of Jesus in ancient Israel, right up to the Greek gods and the Roman Empire. Now when I say we went back in time, I mean we literally traveled back in time on a time machine ship that took us to these ancient civilizations where we were actually able to go there and really see them live. And it's all been thanks to our great friend and regular guest, Captain M. And he's here to say a few words now, so Captain M, come on out. Hello, Mr. Mercuro, and thank you for having me. Hello, students. Hello, everyone. I just want to say it has been an absolute pleasure having you fly with me this year. I love taking you back into the past and showing you these great civilizations where you can see them live. You were amazing guests. Thank you so much. Your living museum. Oh, my gosh, it's amazing. You've done an absolutely terrific job. Bravo. Keep working hard, aim for the stars. I'm sure our paths will cross again soon one day. And I just want to say thank you, Mr. Mercuro, and thank you, class. Enjoy the show. For sure. Captain M, thank you so much. Uh, I'll see you again soon. Thank you, Captain M. And now, it is my privilege to present to you gods, goddesses, pharaohs, and the greats of the past. Enjoy the Living Museum of ancient civilizations. Long time ago, a time that no one remembers, titans ruled the earth. They were selfish and reckless, chaos, destruction, death. But then I appeared. I became the most known among gods, in fact, I am their king and the ruler of the sky. Now, mortals, listen to my great story. My father, Titan Cronus, who ruled the world, was afraid of a prophecy that one of, of his kids would overthrow him, so he swallowed everyone but me. Because my mother, Rhea, hid me in a cave on Island Creek, and instead gave my stupid father rocks in my clothes. When I grew up, I sneaked into Cronus's palace and poisoned his vine so he threw up my siblings. We overthrew the titans and locked them up in the underworld. So I became the king of gods and the ruler of the sky. Today I'm a myth, a memory. Many ruins dedicated to praise me like Parthenon remain in Greece. Though people think I'm just a myth, which is ridiculous, I'm warning you, behave, pathetic creatures. Artemis the Amazing. This is a tale about me, a goddess. My name is Artemis. Now, there are many other names for me. For example, Agritora, the patron goddess of hunters, Potnia Theron, the patron goddess of wild animals, Trophos, the nurse of youths, Lokia, goddess of childbirth and midwives, and Cynthia, named after my birthplace on Mount Synthus on top of Dillus. I'm a feminist, an environmentally involved person, and most importantly, a goddess. I'm the goddess of the hunt, the wilderness, wild animals, the moon, and virgins. I have a Roman side, like most gods and goddesses. My Roman equivalent is Diana. My Roman side is much more serious than my comfort form, my Greek form, Artemis. As for Camp Jupiter, the Roman camp, the campers are much more serious too. My name in Latin means Diana. Artemis and Diana as names have no similarity, so there's no connection. My mother gave birth to me on the island of Ortigia, where I helped her give birth to my brother Apollo. 
I was born on the island of Ortigia on Mount Synthus over top of Delos. I am the daughter of Leto and Zeus. It is said that Hera was jealous of any affairs Zeus had, so she cursed Leto so that she can't have her kids on land. As I've said before, I am the daughter of Leto and Zeus. I have a twin brother named Apollo. Apollo is the god of the sun. I was sometimes known as the goddess of the moon. I was born a day before Apollo and was named the moon goddess. We cannot forget about Selene, the mother of vampires and another moon goddess. Selene and I worked together to bring the moon where it is today. Anyways, I'm known as the goddess of the moon, the goddess of wild animals, the hunt, and also chastity and childbirth. I am known as the goddess of the hunt and is very respected by other gods and goddesses. Once, one of my nymphs fell in love and snuck off, so I turned into a bear and killed her. I am very protective over women in labor, but in a tale, it is said that my arrows kill them right after they give birth. Anyways, as we all know, the gods and goddesses are immortal. I'm not dead, but my relevance today is popular among Greeks, like any usual god or goddess. I'm very respected by, among my companions and supporters. I'm very respected because of all the things I protect, especially my dignity. The Greeks imagine me very tall and elegant. They believe I carry my head up high wherever I go. I stand up for what I believe in and won't let anyone, especially a man, tell me I can't. I should be an example for all the women. Hold your head high and never bow down. There was one pharaoh who shocked ancient Egypt by the masses. One pharaoh who did so much with her, not his life. There was one pharaoh who secured Egypt and brought peace and prosperity. One pharaoh who had the guts to stand and take what she believed hers. I am Hatshepsut, and here is my story. I was born in 1507 BC in ancient Egypt with Thutmose the second. I had two sisters and a brother, but they all died very soon. This proved to be a problem for some reason to my father. He thought that a woman ruling Egypt as Pharaoh was a bad idea. So he should have seen me rule. Anyway, he decided I should be wed to my half-brother at the age of 15. Absolutely horrid. But he decided so, and I had to comply. So he married me to the half-brother with the logic that the brother would inherit the throne, and I could be queen quietly beside him as I rotted away to the underworld. <sighs> Good thing my half brother was, I refused to call him my husband, was sickly and frail, so I did most of the work and made most of the decisions. But I was overly respectful because I always gave credit and respected him like he was a true pharaoh. He was not. I was the one who was doing all the work. But he died two years later, which gave me something to work with. Two years after his death. I know, I waited so long. I claimed the throne as pharaoh, a title only given to males. Now, some disrespectful modern people call me Queen Hatshepsut, but that is absolutely unthinkable. I must be called Pharaoh Hatshepsut or I'll be rolling in my mummy wraps. But I proved to be a pretty nifty ruler. I secured trading routes with Biblos, or as you modern people call it, Lebanon, and some place called Punt. I think it's somewhere along the Horn of Africa or in Arabia. Pa, I refuse to give you the information. But in all seriousness, I secured trading routes and brought many riches and new things to Egypt, and had a fairly peaceful reign. I often told people I was the daughter of Amun, one of the most powerful gods of air and wind. You see, pharaohs are the sons, or daughters, of the gods, and are told to lead by them. I, of course, was doubted in the stance, but I held strong until I got the respect I deserved. Sadly, though, I died on January 16th, 1458 BC, during the 18th dynasty of Egypt. I likely died of a blood infection at the age of 42. After 22 years of rule, I still remember, I still remember to this day. I really was amazing, and in the face of those dumb, restrictive ruling laws, I was supreme. And don't forget, it's Pharaoh Hatshepsut. Or, if you really want to be authentic, Pharaoh Hatshepsut. Imagine being the god of the underworld, having complete control over the army of the dead. Imagine being the judge of the dead, judging all who come to the underworld. Imagine having control of Cerberus, the three-headed guard dog of Hades. This can only describe one god, me, Hades, king of the underworld. I was born a little bit before the creation of all living things on earth. When I was still an infant, Cronus ate me with my, along with my siblings, in fear of us overthrowing him. When Cronus was eating us, Mom hid one of my siblings so that he, Cronus wouldn't eat him. That baby was Zeus. Zeus saved us by making Cronus fond of us. I am related to Zeus, Poseidon, Hera, Rhea, and Cronus, and Chiron.
During my early life, I was stuck in Cronus' belly, but I still aged, so when I got out, I joined Zeus in the battle against the Titans. And after that, Zeus, Poseidon, and I drew lots to see who was the god of what. I got the underworld, and I'm still living there today. When I was a baby, I was trapped in Cronus' belly with my siblings. Me and my siblings were helpless, but we were gods, and gods can't die. When I got out of Cronus' belly, I was a young god, and I helped Zeus take down Cronus and the Titans. After we defeated the Titans, the big three gods, Zeus, Poseidon, and I, drew lots to see who was the god of what. I ended up with the underworld. Being the ruler and the god of the underworld came with a lot of responsibilities. I had to get three judges so that I didn't always have to judge the dead. I, I also had to make sure no ghosts escaped the underworld and went to the land of the living. Being the god of the underworld also has a good side. I got a helmet which grants me in invisibility and it can, it can also allow me to walk through walls. I also had control over Cerberus, the three-headed guard dog of, of the underworld. I, I am most known for being one of the big three gods. I've gone to a lot of trouble, so let me tell you one famous story about me. I was lonely and wanted a wife to keep me company. I was so lonely I was willing to kidnap a, go a goddess to be my wife. I chose Persephone to be my wife. Since Persephone was the daughter of Demeter, Demeter was always protecting Persephone. When Demeter and Persephone were in the field, Persephone wandered off and that is when I took my chance and kidnapped her. Once Demeter found out, she went to Zeus and told him that I kidnapped her daughter. Zeus and Demeter then went to me and told her to give, told me to give her back. I, I then said I was lonely and Zeus took pity on me and said for six months she can stay down in the underworld, but the other six months Persephone can spend with Demeter. Demeter then said that as long as Persephone is down in the underworld, none of the crops will grow. This is why during winter the crop no crops grow, and why in the spring and summer the crops grow. I am now to I am now remembered today through myths about the Greek gods and their battles and adventures. I am also remembered through books about the Greek gods such as the Percy Jackson series. Stories about me also show how the ancient Greeks worshiped the gods. My legacy will last forever, and remember that if you cross me, I will send you to the fields of punishment forever. Uh, for I am Lord Hades, the god of the underworld. Beauty, oh please, you know nothing. The only one that does is moi. Aphrodite, Greek goddess of love and beauty. I am known for being the most beautiful goddess that walked in this world. I was born on the island of Cyprus. My parents were Zeus and Dio, and I have a plethora of half-siblings. My name means foam in Greek, and there is a creepy story where I came out of the ocean, but that is for another time. Once again, I am known for being the goddess of love and beauty. I have the ability to cause fighting couples to fall in love again. But sadly, I could not marry my true love. By the arrangement of Hera, I was forced to wed the ugliest god of them all, Hephaestus. We had three children together, but that still didn't make me love him anymore. Everyone, even Hephaestus, knew that my true love was the charming Ares. I cheated multiple times with Ares, and we had eight kids together. My favorite child was Eros, aka Cupid, like mother, like son. Even though I am known for being moody and sassy, I enjoy helping mortals with scary tasks that they did not want to do. Because of that, people think of me as brave and confident. My favorite couple I helped was Helen of Troy and Paris, though I wonder if they lived happily ever after. Today, I am still known as the most beautiful goddess in the world with songs, books, and even a musical written about me. There are also plenty of beauty products with my name on it. You can use it, but good luck trying to match this face. I am so honored to have influenced so much love and beauty. As a goddess, I still like to interfere with lovers. The next time you fall in love, that just might be me. You're welcome. Stay beautiful, lovers, but not too beautiful. Was that the eyeliner, the makeup, the beauty? You've seen me one way or another. Maybe I'm just that amazing, and smart, and talented, and named Cleopatra. Have you ever wanted to learn all about, all about me? Because I'm here for you. The 
They should have paid me more. Cleopatra, or just me, was born into Egyptian royalty receiving superior tutors and mentors, became one of the most intelligent women or even persons of all time. In fact, considering I specialize in all courses, almost all higher ups I associated with could only describe me as someone well-spoken. Although I'm known for many, you probably got lies to. For example, my lo well-known love triangle, that's, a that's actually a love square. So let me tell you some truths. I, the Greek and Persian woman striving to be the pharaoh of Egypt, did happen, with blood, sweat, and tears added. Being born into royalty and oldest at that, it wasn't unlikely for me to be pharaoh. When my father died, I didn't rule alone. I co-ruled with my brother and was forced to marry. My brother kicked me out. Being rebellious, that became my flame to overthrow him. After being exiled, I went to Rome in a bed sheet so no one recognized me. Recognized me. Being amused, Caesar was very enlightened to see me. He accepted me as his mistress, but my flattering words got my favor towards him. He practically let me do anything, so I took his army and killed my brother, caused drowning from the ship he was running from, which exploded and was bombed by me. I reunited with my younger brother, and we started an intimate relationship. Two years later, I killed both of them, Caesar and my little brother. Married to none, I'm my little brother. Married to none, I was still in a public relationship, with the most popular intimate relationship, yet also out of advantages, the overpowered general, Mark Anthony. They said we were endlessly fond of each other, and perfectly compatible. I'm not so sure. I had enemies alongside Anthony. They exposed Anthony's will, would, which would outrage everyone. The public offended and outraged. Anthony elopes, bringing me to Greece. The man who took what was rightfully fully Anthony's was Octavian. He chased Anthony Pulini. The soldiers were ordered to surrender and scurry to Alexandria. Anthony told me he cannot defeat me then and wishes that I find a better man. I ignored it. I already planned something. I was going to kill him, like my other two. Or three. So, I left him, deceived him, and killed him. I was waiting for the place he was to be buried. Because McDreamy must be sitting before he's dead. We had our last conversation, since he was still conscious. Honey bun, he told me. Go live a good life. And make friends with your enemies, is also what he told me. Of course. That's what I wanted. But Octavian, which was my enemy, never thought that I would actually go with it. And since I did, he didn't keep it. I suicided, inflicted with a snake. And I, the woman with potential as big as a sea and power that equates taller than any mountain, died in a romantic notion. And many more things that make me worthy to go down in history. Duh. Well, 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 the maiden queens and ancient mamas, those are queen and Greek mythology. That's me. My name is Hera. I am the goddess, I'm the, I'm goddess of, I'm the Greek goddess of marriage and family. I'm also the queen of the Olympus and the heavens. I was, I was born in Samos, and, and, and I am in the Asian Sea. I was known and worshipped by the Greeks in the 5th and 4th, in the 5th and 4th century BCE. BCE. Um, like all the gods and goddesses. I all got, 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 like all the good gods and goddesses. I, I also have a Roman side. My name is Juno. Juno's more violent, but all the Roman sides are all, all, all the Roman sides are, are more violent. I also have a family, being a goddess of family. I also, I also have one myself. And my family, my family, my family was was made of two titans and six gods slash goddesses. My, my parents were Cronus and Rhea. They were titans. My siblings were Demeter. My siblings were Demeter, Hestia, Hades, Hades, Poseidon, Zeus. And, and they were the gods and goddesses. When I was born, my mother, Rhea, took me to my father, Kronos. He saw me in the age book. He scared the prophecy that he got to y'all as children. And uh, then I joined my two sisters, and down I went. So I joined them, you know what I mean? And uh, then down came my two brothers. And uh, then Kronos was getting rickety. They were like, eh, normal, normal for him. He's like, also he's going to get rickety, rickety. But then he said, but then he said, like, you know, like, still was turning. He said, like, but, like, he's going to, like, grow up. And uh, then he actually did grow up. And out he came. And out we came. And uh, then, 
We all we all came out, and then we and then we were all covered in goo since we weren't in his stomach. And then, but, but, but then we saw this man in front of us. He introduced himself as Zeus. We, 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 and and he wasn't and he wasn't covered in goo. So he introduced, he introduced himself to Zeus. And he and he was he was our younger brother. He had a younger brother. So we all made a plan to over to overpower Kronos. And that didn't work. We didn't overpower him. We didn't overthrow him. So now we're all tight and free. And, he, uh, and, then, uh, and then after that, after, 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 after that we were tight and free, Zeus tricked me. He took me into marrying him. Because he did, he loved me. He loved me. And I knew he loved me crying. It was amazing. I knew he had all to say. Um, so then one day he told me, if I can get you, if I can get you to say that I love you to me, don't mind me. I said, sure. Then one, uh, then, later on, I was in my, I was in my apartment, I was in my apartment in Olympus. And then I hear this, and then I hear this crying bird, I look and there was a bird, I pick it up, and I bring it in, because it was hurt, and then I let it stay the night, and then after that night, I, I, I go back, and after that night, in the morning, I wake up, and I go, and I go to check on it. And it's, and it's in the wake, it's, you know, it's still hurt, still hurt. So then I say, so then I pick it up and start singing. I was like, oh, so how can I say I love you? Turn into Zeus, then we get married. So then I, I me and Shane being like, we got married. And then, after that, I go, we got married then, during our wedding. I did, we got many, many gifts. One of my favorites was, was the golden, the golden apples that I got. Well, I will show you about later on. Although, being married to Zeus, he obviously, before he married me, he also loved, loved. Of going around having children. Oh, I did, I did, I did, I did, I did have kids with him. Though. The kids I did have with him, they were Aries, he Hephaestus, Angelus, Ard, Eutheria, and Neil and Aries. I did a little more, little more than these. Although I did really write, I did write to, to all the power when I married, when I did marry Zeus. Although he cheated on me, though. he cheated and cheated and cheated and cheated and cheated and cheated. And cheated, and cheated. So I took revenge. I cursed Leto. I cursed her. I cursed her. Because when I, when I found she had twins, I just didn't. I said, I cursed her because she, she couldn't have them on land. She still had them because Zeus brought on an island for her. But there's one kid that he had that I hated. I hated so much. I hated him. Like, oh my god, my god. <laughs> it was Hercules. I I sent snakes to him. I hate, I hate, he was Zeus's son, favorite son. He was one of his favorite friends. When the second came, Hercules grabbed him certainly like that. When he grew older, I caused him to go insane. To the possibility kill his wife and children. I then made him suffer. I then, I then made him to the consequences of murder of his wife and children by bestowing upon his 12 labors. Slay the naming lion. Bring back skin. Slay the lemon. Capture, capture the current high. Capture the erythrin boar. Clean the agricultural. One day, slay the slay the slime flying birds. Capture the capture the crazy bull. Steal the merit diamonds. Capture the griddle belt of of, of, of Hippolyte. Obtain the cows of Grayon. Steal of going on to steal the apples of her Hesperides and capture and, and capture Cerberus, the apples of mine. When my gifts, I couldn't capture them because they were because they were guarded by a dragon. The dragon was guarded by the by the sisters of Atlas. So they were no 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 sisters. They were sisters and they were daughters and and they were daughter and they were the daughter of Atlas. So then I prayed to myself, like, kill him, kill. I made I made sure each tax would end would end him and and his life is gone. I have no idea, but he survived. He survived them. I don't know how. It must be in the year, guys. After, after he was in touch, I offered him his hand in marriage. And he took it. So that's why I am going to... How does it feel to never lose? Good? Well, there was one Greek goddess who was always determined to win. Meet me. I'm Nike, the goddess of victory and speed. I'm one goddess you can always count on for winning a game. I'm imagined as a fit young winged woman with a palm frond or a blade. I have a Greek side and a Roman side. My Greek side name is Nike. My Roman side name is Victoria, which in Latin means victory. Victory in both war and peaceful competition. In some wars, I had metal companions that chased people around when they were not cooperating, called Nikets. Me, Kratos, Zulios, and Baia were born to palace and Styx. Zeus instituted an oath to be sworn by the waters of Styx that flowed from a rock in Hades' realm, a gift granted in return for the help she and her children gave him against the Titans. I am daughter of Tit the Titan Pallas, who was killed by Athena in the Titan War, though me and Athena are still great friends. My mother is Styx, who was a water nymph goddess. Styx was also named after a river in the underworld because of her power. I have three brothers named Baia, Zelios, and Kratos. I was born in 550 BC. My home was in Olympus. I lived with the gods and goddesses after the Titan War, but before the Titan War, in my early life, I was often flying around battlefields rewarding glo victory, glory, and fame by handing out laurel wreaths. I often carry the staff of Hermes, symbolic of my role as the messenger of victory. 
I rose to power by having the role of the divine charioter, flying above battlefields and giving glory to the victors. During the Titan War, I was also known as the winged goddess of victory, Victoria. I am known for many things. One thing I'm known for today is being named after a shoe. The company decided to name the shoe after me because the logo is diverged from my winged swoosh, which symbolizes the sound, speed, movement, and power, and motivation. The logo is also said to symbolize the wing of me. I am also known for always winning the Olympic Games. Since 1896, one set of these Summer Olympic game medals has featured the Greek goddess of victory, Moa. I'm also seen at the right hand of Athena's statue. I rose to power by having the role of the right hand woman of Zeus. I fly above battlefields and giving glory to the victors during the Titan War. I do not actually appear in many mythical stories, but one story I do appear in is the story of Nike, Zeus, and the giant Typhius. Typhius is one of the most deadliest monsters. Some say when the giant Typhius struck Olympus, Everyone fled, while well, Zeus and I stayed to fight off the monster. Zeus was alone when I came in to confront him, scoring the high pass of the air with my shoe. I had, I had a speech full of reproaches with pitiful lips. Lord Zeus, stand up as a champion of your own children. Let me never see you mingle with Athena, she who knows not the way of man with maid. Gather the steadfast universe are shaking under Typhon's hands. Demeter has renounced her harvests. He be has left her cup. Ares has thrown down his spear, Hermes has dropped his staff, and Apollo has cast away his harp, leaving his winged arrows behind. The monster Typhius engaged Zeus in battle. I led Zeus and I also led Zeus into battle. Between the two sides, Zeus and Typhon fought while the while the booming shots of thunderbolts revealed in the night sky like dancers. I lifted my shield and held it before Zeus. He swiftly turned his golden chariot toward the round of the ethel stars while I rode by his side and drove my father's team with the heavenly whip. In relevance today, the Greeks still worship Moa, but that is obvious. I'm the most fabulous goddess ever. They believe I can make them immortal, and I was able to grant human strength and the speed needed to be victorious in any task they did. I've been a symbol used since 1945 by American's anti-aircraft missile system. I have been the leader in the world's sports equipment and apparel since 1978. Honda motorcycles use the symbol of me as part of the as the company's logo, as a sign of victory. I am seen today in Greece at the right hand of Athena's statue. I am also shown with wings. Some images of me do not have wings. They call that statue of me Athena of Aparos. Even in the end, I always got my way. Greetings, mortals. I am Apollo, the Olympian god of sun and light. Great at archery. I am a perfect blend of physical superiority and moral virtue. I am not paid attention to much because my siblings, friends, and others, like Cleopatra, they steal the spotlight, especially narcissists. I used to be best at being an important pastoral deity, and I was the patron of herdsmen and shepherds. But I started hanging out with more mortals. Here's a fun fact. I provided protection of herds, flocks, and crops from diseases. Pests and predators were my primary duties. During the Trojan War, I fought on the side of Troy. At one point, I sent diseased arrows into the Greek camp, making many of the Greek soldiers sick and weak. Later, after that, Hero, Achilles, defeated the Trojan Hector. I guided my arrow that struck Achilles in the heel and killed him. Or, well, he killed me, I guess. I can't quite remember if he killed me or if I killed him. Or if it was a human mortal thing. Oh, oh. I must leave now. Thank you and farewell. You are also my new mortal friend. Imagine yourself in ancient Greece. War is happening in Troy. The war was later called the Trojan War. Many people claim that I started the war in an act of love. My parents were the king of the gods, Zeus, and the queen of Sparta, also the wife of Tyndareus, Leia. Mother told me they met one time when Zeus has transformed into a swan to seduce her, and as a result of their engagement, I was born. 
I have two brothers, Castor and Pollux, the famous Argonauts from Greek mythology. I also have a sister in the name of Clytemnestra. As a child, I was kidnapped by the famous hero Theseus. It wasn't a very pleasant time to put it in the nicest way. At least I got rescued by my brothers. After his failure, he decided to go to the underworld to kidnap Persephone. For me, my beauty was more of something like a curse. I am Helen of Troy. As I grew, I gained even more beauty. There were many famous heroes and suitors wanting my hand in marriage, but I picked Melon's king of Mycenae. Meanwhile, this guy named Paris was being questioned by three goddesses, the lovely Aphrodite, the wise and clever Athena, and the queen of the Olympians, Hera. They were fighting over a shiny golden apple that was for the fairest goddess of all. The goddesses had given Paris the apple for him to decide, and they all bribed him, eager to earn the apple. Athena had offered him knowledge and victory in war. Hera had offered him power, a few parts of Asia and the riches, and Aphrodite had offered him, get this, me. Since Aphrodite had what Paris wanted most, he picked her as the fairest. Paris went on a quest for the Trojans and became a guest in the house of Melanus. I was there, of course. I instantly fell in love with the young prince the moment I saw him. I guess I didn't truly love Melanus, or maybe it was Aphrodite making me fall in love with Paris. Probably the second one. I left Melanus behind and fled to Troy, where I became known as Helen of Troy. Melanus was furious that I abandoned him. He always warned Troy if it, if I wasn't returning him at once. Me and Paris both refused, and that led to the start of the now famous Ten Year Trojan War. Paris was killed in an arrow, and I was heartbroken. Thanks a lot, Aphrodite. In fact, I was so desperate that I actually returned to King Melanus. He was about to strike me with his sword and kill me, but he changed his mind and forgave me. Thank the gods. Finally, a good use for my beauty. Now, there are many so-called theories of how I die. One of the theories was that I and King Melanus lived happily ever after. I hope that one was true. Another depicts that I was hanged by Queen Polixios, who blamed her for getting her husband killed in the war. Come on, I didn't mean to do that. I personally don't remember what happened. Just all I'm saying is, stop blaming for starting the war. Imagine being able to guide souls to the afterlife. The ability to see if people are worthy of living the afterlife, being the god of the dead. This is me, Anubis, one of the most powerful Egyptian gods. I was the first the god of the dead and the person to guide souls to the afterlife. One of my many jobs was to weigh hearts against the feather. If the heart was lighter than the feather, then they would be able to live on to the afterlife. If it wasn't, then their soul would be eaten by Amit, the soul eater. I'm also known as the god of embalming. I became the god of embalming because Seth killed Osiris by putting him in a coffin and setting him down the Nile River. Iris found his body and Seth chopped him and spread him all around Egypt. Nephthys, Iris, and I found all of Osiris' body and took it to Thoth, in which he restored the body and I wrapped him in cloth, which gave me the title and responsibility of the god of embalming. Now my reverence is not much. I'm not worshipped by as many as in the times. You can still see my sign of the Ankh in a lot of places. And I'm also admired by many, but do not forget me, my name. This me, the great King Tuck, and let me tell you about my story. I was one of the kings of Egypt. I was a very powerful man. I was born on 1342 BC. I don't remember what month or day I was born. I was born in Amarna. Amarna was a city or place in Egypt. My father's name was King Akhenaten. He named me Tutankhaten, but after that, I changed my name to Tutankhaten. I ruled Egypt as Pharaoh for over nine years until my death at age 19 around 1324 BC. I was Pharaoh at, at the age of nine in forms of my father's Pharaoh at the time. My legacy was largely negated by my successors. 
I had many accomplishments. One of them was when I helped restore the traditional Egypt with religions and arts. Both of those were set aside by my predecessor, Akhenaten. I brought the old religions and the traditional Egypt back. I lost power when I got an infection from a gangrene infection at age 19. The infection was possibly the result of a broken leg and early investigations pointed to the bone fragments and we spoke to propose the theory that I died from a blow to the head by political rivals. That was my early life, my rise to power, my accomplishments and what made me lose power. There's a time where the Greek gods and goddesses lived, a time period where each god or goddess had its own power that they held, a time period where statues were built for the gods and goddesses, where each person or group had its own god or goddess that they worshipped, where some gods were stronger than the others, where some gods lived on Mount Olympus, and in that time period lived the wonderful goddess Hebe. My parents were Zeus and Hera. I was the youngest daughter of Zeus and Hera. I lived in Mount Olympus with my family. I was mostly known for being a cupbearer to the gods and goddesses. I would serve them nectar and ambrosia. I was also a great help to my mother, Hera. I would always help my mother out with her chores, and I would, and I would also take care of my brother, Ares. I later got married to Heracles and had two children named Alexiris and Ancetus. I was most known for being the goddess of youth, which means that I have power over eternal youth. I was worshipped at Sion, and I was worshipped as the god of forgiveness and mercy. The people of ancient Greece would call me Dia, meaning daughter of Zeus. I was also worshipped in the Athens. There was a famous statue of me in the 5th century, and it was made out of ivory and gold. However, that statue of me appears to be lost. The people of ancient Greece would also do a yearly festival dedicated to me. One famous story was with me and Lolas. Lolas was an old man and he was going to fight Eurytheus, but the problem was that he was too old. Lolas then asked me to become young again, but I wasn't willing to make him young again. But then the Gathemus, the god of justice, told me that it was fair to do it. Lolas' wish was then granted and he became young again. Us gods and goddesses do not die. We continue to live through the myths and stories of our great power and run through over the people of ancient Greeks. I still continue to live with the gods and goddesses of Mount Olympus. I am still married to the great Heracles. I no longer serve the gods and goddesses Nectar and Ambrosia. I now have my own seat on Mount Olympus with the rest of the great gods and goddesses. Do you ever wonder who's the goddess of rainbows? Ever wonder who's the messenger of the gods? Do you ever wonder who's allegedly responsible for all the pretty colorful things you see in the sky? Well, there's only one person. Me. <laughs> Iris. <laughs> Iris. The goddess of rainbows and the messenger of the gods. My family consists of my father, Thomas, a marine god, and my mother, Electra, a, a cloud nymph, and a few siblings. I have four sisters and one brother. I also have a partner, Zephyrus, who's the god of the west wind, one of the four wind gods, and my child, Potus, the god of longing or yearning. Not much is known about my early life slash birth, but what I do know is that I was born in the midst of the sky just when the sun came out. Me being the goddess of rainbows and such, I'm given divine authority and full control of all the rainbows. <laughs> Now since, I do, since, now since I do have full control of the rainbows, it's only right if I have my own powers. I have photokinesis, able to control light and such. Now since I do have able to control light and stuff, superhuman super speed, able to move at a fast pace. Since I am a messenger god and I also have control of animals, meaning that I can control all of my pets. Now since, we mentioned, now since we already mentioned I'm a messenger god for the gods and goddesses, let's go into that a little more. I'm a messenger of the gods and goddesses and was often called the female counterpart to Hermes, the god of messaging. I would also be seen serving the god Nectar. I was always a side character in any of the Greek stories and plays. A popular story that I participated in was a story where Leto was prior to giving birth to twins Apollo and Artemis. 
and all of the goddesses were, attend, were to attend the birth of the twins, except for Hera and Elithia, the goddess of birth. On the ninth day of Leto's labor, Leto told me to bribe Elithia and ask her to help out with the birthing. My lasting <laughs> legacy and impact on today is being the messenger of the gods and goddess of rainbows. This is the myth of me, Arachne. Well, if you're arachnophobic, this will still be interesting to you. I was known all around the world for my beautiful tapestries. Unfortunately, because of my huge ego, Athena decided to turn me into a spider, but still had my weaving talent to remind me of the lesson I learned. There isn't a lot of information about my childhood, but we know that I was born around 43 BCE. My father, Edamon, was a merchant who died class. As my father's business was dying, I developed a weaving skill with a cloth and silk he made. This slowly gathered attention. Later, many people came to our shop just to see me weave. As I got older, I improved a lot. But because of much praise, my pride started to grow. Sometimes I would be bragging. Athena, the daughter of Zeus, and the goddess heard about this very talented mortal, me, obviously. She went down to earth disguised as an elderly woman. I said that my talent was from, the, from my hard work and not from the gods. Athena was annoyed about this since she was the god of the craft. Athena told me that I was disrespecting the gods with my talent, but I denied this, and so Athena revealed her true self. And so, the contest began. Everyone gathered to see the competition between the two weavers. After a while, Athena finished. It was filled with color and showed the gods' victories. I showed mine after. It had the opposite colors representing the bad side of the gods. But she couldn't lie. Mine was better than hers, which was obvious already. But even though I was better, Athena was enraged about my pride, so Athena turned me into a small, eight-legged creature. This would remind me and other mortals this lesson. I was immortal, but I was sadly killed. Legends say, and other myths say, that spiders today are my children. They work to keep my legacy alive and to remind others the story of me. You can still be proud of your work. But do not be too prideful like I did. It'll only get end up getting you in trouble. But if you become too prideful like me, who knows what you'll turn into next. There are many Greek gods, but there are three ones who are called the big three. We are Zeus, Poseidon, and Hades. Zeus has the sky, Poseidon has the sea and water, Hades has the umbrella. I am Poseidon, the most known god in the world. I am the son between Kronos, the king of titans, and Rhea, the titan of motherhood and woman. My siblings are Hades, Zeus, Hestia, Hera, and Demeter. I am the one who created the horses. I am known to be the god of sea and water. I am also the god of earthquakes. I became the god of horses because I am the one who made them. My trident is a very powerful weapon that can control the sea and cause the earthquakes. There is a story about how olives came to be. The story goes like this. At the dissolution festival, in Athens, Athena and I competed to become the primary deity of Athens. During this competition, Athena and I were to offer one gift to the Athenians and they picked the one they preferred more. I slapped the ground with this trident and there was a spring of salt water. 
Athena offered an olive tree. The olive tree would give them with oil and coats, so they chose the olive tree. There are many things featuring me. Neptune is the Roman name for me, and it is the name of the eighth planet in the solar system. I am the great, mighty sea god, Poseidon. Hey, do you see these plants behind me? Do you know who makes these plants? Hi, I make these plants, and my name is Demeter. I'm God of Agriculture and second oldest and second born daughter to Kronos and Rhea. My siblings are Hestia, Hera, Poseidon, Hades, and Zeus. I have two children, Persephone and Plutus. Persephone's father is Zeus, and Plutus's father is Aegean. I am mostly known for the story of Persephone and Hades. It always makes me cry when I talk about it. One day, my beloved Persephone was out picking flowers, and Hades had to come by, and and he fell in love with my daughter, and he decided to kidnap her. And I lost her, and I was looking out for days. And while under the underworld, uh, Hades decided to force my daughter to eat four pomegranate seeds. And after searching for ten days, I met with Helios, the sun god. And Helios told me everything. I marched down into the underworld, and I told Hades to give my daughter back. Thank goodness that Zeus stepped in and he decided to handle it maturely. And he said that my beloved Persephone would spend six months up here on earth with me and four months, four little months down with Hades. And why four months? Because she ate those four pomegranate seeds. And it wasn't all that bad because she fell in love with Hades, so... And in the end, I mean, I'm still here, I'm immortal, I cannot die, and yeah, eat your vitamin, vitamins, kids. This, the military wouldn't be the same without me. This world wouldn't be the same without me. I, Alexander Great, had great men in for a reason. I was also responsible for changing the face of the ancient world. I first off as a military man and then became king of ancient Macedonia. Growing up, me being that dark haired curly headed boy I was, held it was on my father, who spent most of his time engaging in military companions and extra martial affairs. I lived in Macedonia. I was born at a kingdom. I was born on the very day that the temple of Diana at Ephesus was burned to the ground. And me, Elton the Great, was born on July 20th, 356 BC. My creation was one of the largest empires in the ancient world, stretching from London Sea to Hemelisos. I was so adventurous in my conquests were rights, but including Antonia, Syria, Phoenicia, Judea, Gaza, Egypt, Mesopotamia, Persia, and Bacteria, and extending the boundaries of its own empire as far as Taxilia, India, my confidence was certainly for good reason, as when I was building my 13-year-long kingdom, I had no significant intruders when the 13-mile-long kingdom was under construction. When I was in my 20s, I claimed the Macedonia throne and killed my rivals before they could challenge my soldiery. I was known for my military experience and my creation of a vast empire that stretched from Macedonia to Egypt and from Greece to part of India. I had a series of wins to ensure the complete control over Greece. I had the Battle of Chironia and concluded the win that concluded with the defeat of Sacred Band. I was given the title name Son of Ra. I named myself the Son of Ra because I knew I was a god. As my name implies, my great accomplishments writing into my article included my 3,000 mile long kingdom, taking 13 to make ruling at the age of 20. My relationship with my father is how I became a general in my father's army. When Philip interviewed in a fight that had broken out between the fashions of my army, Philip had saved himself by taking a guru ground, apparently unconscious. I was who, only 16 at the time, but who had already led his army in battle, jumped into the fight and ended it and saved his life. 
Debius continued to challenge him. Debius continued to challenge him. I destroyed the city of Debius and enslaved its people. Then began his conquest. In Pella to punish Perseus for extremes, invasion of Greece. Like Michael Jordan in 15 years of conquest, I never lost a battle. Sadly, I died June 11, 324 BC. I was only 32 years old when I died. My cause of death was unknown. Sources say it was likely to be either Marley or poison and possibly other natural causes. Though my death was unfortunate, I was no doubt an influential man who, whenever you remember this or not, whenever you think I'm influential man or not, even if you don't listen to all of this, I'll never be truly forgotten, as my accomplishments were too insignificant to forget. My influence would be put to shame if I was to be forgotten as if I never existed. Hello, I am Hepatitis, the god of fire, metalworking, stone, masonry, forges, and the art of sculpture. I am the son of Zeus and Hera, and married to Aphrodite. By Zeus to prevent war, a war f of the gods fighting for her hand, I am a smiting god, making all the weapons for Olympus, and acting as a blacksmith for the gods. The sad part is I was thrown by Zeus off Mount Olympus because of how my mother looked at me and said I was ugly and told Zeus to throw me off Mount Olympus. I was born in C5th BC as one of many gods and goddesses were still mentioned today, more commonly in Greece where we even have mountains in our honor. I was the first bonus born to Cronus and Rhea, two titans, which means all their future children would be titans as well. Fortunately, this is not the case. According to the prophecy, Cronus's children would soon overpower him and overthrow him. Cronus, being in fear of his future, swallowed me as soon as, a, as soon as I was born. Luckily for me, I was the only one who got swallowed. Hades, Poseidon, Hera, and Demeter also got swallowed my siblings. One day, our youngest brother Zeus was born. Our mother, not wanting him to be swallowed, hid Zeus out of our father's reach. G giving Zeus the chance to have a normal childhood and soon defeat, defeat and overpower father by putting a powerful potion into his beer at a, beer, at a drinking competition. Meaning that all his, all, everything he ever swallowed would soon dis be discord in reverse order, starting with a giant boulder, then my then my four siblings, and then I being the last one since I was the firstborn. I am known as the Virgin Goddess. When I when I was set my hand in marriage for both my brother Poseidon and my nephew Apollo, being the goddess of wisdom, I decided to become an eternal virgin, meaning I would never have kids or get married married. Accepting my request and gr my brother Zeus granted my desire. Accepting my decision, Apollo and Poseidon both promised to punish anyone who tried to woo me into marriage. I am also known as the 12th Olympian, 12th Olympian. When uh, Dionysus came to Olympia, he was offered a spot as an Olympian. Being the goddess of wisdom, I gladly gave him my spot. When the gods were upset or in a big argument, they had they had the decision to come sit next to my heart, take a seat next to me, which would bring them to their most calmness. Because not only the hearth is very calm to sit by, but I'm very calming. In the end, I never died, being immortal. I also didn't have a legacy since I never had children that got married. Till this day there are there are places mountains, temples, museums in my honor. I'm still remembered today as one of the kindest goddesses of the 12 Olympians.
Can you imagine being the goddess of wisdom and war also? I am one of the members of the 12 Olympians. I was known for my strategy and skill in war. Also, I am one of the powerful goddess in Greek. Also, I am very fierce and courageous. I lived opportunity 40 BC and also I lived in Mount Olympus. I am the goddess of wisdom and battle. Also, I was born from Zeus's forehead as a result of him swallowing my mother. Matisse's. My mother was Matisse's and my father was Zeus and I have 26 siblings. In Greek mythology, I am one of the 12 Olympians who are major to the Greek pantheon. I am well known by people for protecting civilized lives. I was the goddess of city. According to the sources, I was praised for my compassion and generosity. My special powers included the ability to invent useful items and craft. I invented the ships, chariots, plows, and ricks. I also invented many skills used by women in ancient Greece, such as weaving and pottery. I was famous in Greek mythology for helping heroes on their adventures. I helped Hercules as Jave his 12th labor Perseus figure out how to defeat Medusa and Odysseus on his adventure in the Odysseus and Jason in the building of his magical ship the Ogre. Also there are more tales about me like Athena and Rackney and the Weaving Contest, the Contest of Poseidon and Athena, Athena and the Prize of the Impedity and Athena's Birth of the Head of Zeus. I died when I threw myself in front of Zeus before he could stab and fall by Kronos' hand suddenly by was he done? Kronos asked Athena why she would sacrifice herself.